Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have our two players, Mr. Wolf, our green Dominion player over here, who will learn about his avatar shortly. And we have Defiant as the white Klingons down here, Martok, as you can see from the torpedo over here. And tonight, this is a dual commentary with Redman Mark. Say hello. Hello, guys. And this is a dual commentary that I did promise you, with them both being their favorite races. Well, what I believe is their best races, anyway. So, this should be an action-packed game. Right, Dominus? Hopefully. And we can see here that Define has already started off with an economic expansion over here. He's starting off with try and die right away. He's queued up his miners. He's not, not a military ship to see in sight. Whereas, on the other hand, Wolf has started off and is going straight with that small construction yard. He's going to be pumping out ships really quickly. And we can see that he's already queued up his uh, constructors. Hopefully we'll see one of those going to this expansion very soon. Hopefully we will. And we notice that Wolf's uh, scout here is just sitting idly by. I want to see it start exploring, see if he can see what we can see, which is that there are no yards going up yet. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, it's a shame, as we've seen. Um, again, his third constructor hasn't gone straight to the expansion, which is something that we keep saying the Dominion should do. They're going to do the expand tactic route is third one goes to expand and we can see now that wolf has begun his first b8 prototype so this will be a lot of pulses against the pulse weak klingons who have lots of small size ships so what would you like to bet that we'll have out of the klingons mark so sir was, mark i have a <laughs> i haven't fallen asleep on my keyboard i swear down I'm still alive. Um, right, so as uh, you can see, um, again, Wolf is going for expansion, he's fast left, he's not going for an aggressive expansion of taking the one by the Klingon base. Um, again, it would be very interesting if they both built their expansion at the same moon. I could have liked to have seen that. Um, it would be fun, to say the least. Um, where he's going to go into the back of his base, which is much easier to defend because there's no asteroids in the way. And the same thing for. Um, <clears throat> fine. I would have actually liked to see the player take this middle moon. I think that's always a great moon to take if you can early on, especially with Dominion, because you can literally just run straight down to that after you've built your first constructor. Just send it down there and just take that point. It's a good spot to have because it's right in the middle of the map, so it's easy to repair. It's easy to see what, what the players are doing. Uh, there is, a however, player. a disadvantage to taking that middle moon as well, and that's that you don't have try on the one hand, and on the second hand, it opens you to be very vulnerable to attacks behind you because you're stuck in the middle. So you can't protect this expansion over here. You can't attack, um, protect your main base very well. You can only, it's an attack position. So you can't easily go back because your opponent can just run around here. Their yard is closer than this yard is. So they can do a lot more stuff than you can. We notice a battle yard going up here and the Dominion Scout is frantically trying to attack here. Um, we also notice that there is this small yard over this field yard and I'm sure that Mark will have something to say about this field yard position. How did you know? Um, as always, when you're ever doing a field yard um, or a small yard, I like to place it so it's easy for my eyes to get in. Also again, it's on the left side of the Dunithia moon so it's nowhere near that star base that could protect it when ships are going into repair and he wants to do a nice rotatory repair system of ship in, repair, back out again. Um, so again, it can just be sniped from far away, and that's never a good thing. Now, Define has gone for a very interesting choice. He's chosen to start with Burrells, and I want to say I'm quite surprised by this decision given that there are B8s on the field. B8s will do far more damage against those Burrells and most likely capture them given that they only have something like 30 crew. So we will probably see some transporting going on. We'll probably see some Burrells changing sides a few times, having the glorious Jem'Hadar in combat. We see this Kaduj coming out. That is a nice choice against B8s. It's a medium-sized ship. takes less from those pulses, has a torpedo that does a lot of damage, and has that special nice replace weapon that allows you to stop any sort of transporting attacks. Yep, I just want to say that Defiant has built a second scout. Uh, it will be out soon anyway, second scout. So he is going to try and use two scouts. So one, obviously, to follow what the fleet is doing and hopefully another one to see what he's doing at his yards, which is a very nice play. Um, he, Oh, hello, little constructor. What do you suppose that sneaky bugger's up to? 
I think there's going to be a phaser. Yep, phaser sentry coming down. And this will be a nice little forward armament. But I think these Kaduj, if it actually sees it, should be able to easily take this out. But I don't think he's going to see it. It is. It should be in sight range. Um, so let's hope that we have something going on. So one thing I'd like to notice is that Defiant has decided to take this expansion down here. And at the same time, Wolf has decided that he's not going to build a second yard. So he's relying on this one yard plus phaser sentry pressure. So, ooh, and if that Kaduge were to stay with that, it might get the kill. So I'm a little surprised that we don't see that. So I think that cost them a very early victory. It's a bit too late. Um, it's only got... Ooh, it's Ooh got but Mr. B8 is heading, is heading back, around. back around. Oh, this isn't good. So he's going to be very strong here. This is a good position for um, uh, Wolf to be in. That phase century, though, not the strongest of them all. It is going to be a real pain in the bum. But of course, it's also targeting, so it doesn't mean it's going to target the best thing. And he should probably think about pulling out that prototype ASAP. Again, if he chases that, I reckon you're right. He could destroy that now because um, it's just lost so much. And there we go, and I think that is going to be the coup de grace for that B8. This Kaduj is as fast. We saw the replace weapon just go off. The targeting will be switched. And this B8 should be able to kill it. Or, sorry, this Kaduj should be able to kill this B8. We're going to see that go down. Let's move back down here. We see that the phaser sentry is doing a tremendous amount of damage to these, Kadu um, to these Kabej. The Burrell nearly bites it. And, and we did get that B8. Gone. Oh, what a shame. And he managed to get his ship out as well. Good use of cloak. So any B8s that are going to die now are going to be dead for good. We see this small yard going up. More harassment coming up. This is quite nice. I saw that Defiant put his constructor there. That beefy constructor ran for the phase of sentry. Turrets, of course, target the thing that is closest to them first. So whatever that is the strongest thing and that you want to get attacked, you put up right next to that phaser sentry. constructor out, I'd say. Um, I would. But this is very good. This is very, very interesting play. <laughs> this is going to be very back and forth. I don't think we'll be leaving this spot of the map very often at this moment. So while you focus on that, I'm going to look around the map and see what's going on and give you guys an update. Yeah. So, as we can see, on the left side, uh, Wolf has got a full mine. He's got one mine in station between... Um, Four miners, two dilithium, two try. So he has still got his resources coming in very nicely. And only on the Klingon side, we have on the bottom he's expanded. He's got one mining stage between two. He's got Tritanium mining. He's actually set his miners to go over there automatically from his star base, but because he's so busy microing those ships in and out of that main battle yard, he's not actually telling them to mine. So they are sitting there doing nothing. So he really needs to, for just a brief second, draw his attention when he get them mining so he doesn't start to have a resource slump. Because he is already down to only 180 dilithium and 700 titanium. So these ships really need to start mining him some dilithium ASAP. Um, but he's so focused on that bow up there. He's just not doing it at the moment. So I'm really surprised to see that we haven't had any boarding going on. Those B8s are just nailing down the barrels we've had. Um, only one Klingon loss so far. Uh, Wolf did lose his scout just a little bit ago. He might even lose his constructor now. Um, this bug is surely going to go down. If, um, if this Kaduj is in range, since these guys have ADAI, they do far less to these, and they also take more from the Kaduj. But now we've got three B8s on the field, and he can only queue bugs up out of here because he doesn't have that prototype anymore. So we'll see what his next choice is. Uh, this, this Kaduj is going to bite it. That is that, is that gone. And again, I don't think he's realized yet. Uh, let me just take a quick look at the mine. He's <laughs> he really wants that lithium because he now has three Dilithium miners going out on that Dilithium in his bottom expansion there um, and two more miners coming up for the Tritanium so he will have a full set of mining going on soon um, on the bottom and that means he will be able to start popping out the ships again um, so we're a bit of a stalemate here you've got the fact that Borg, Dominion, sorry, can't build Borg, God, I'm tired Dominion can't build any more B8s, any bugs um, and looks like he's giving up, oh dear, that's not good, I would have tried to fight for that battle yard well, the battle yard is still there, so he's just leaving at time, but um, he's hoping to recuperate this. 
Uh, I want to see Defiant try to take this Dilithium Moon over here. He's not being harassed. He's not being scouted. So uh, Wolf won't even know what's going on. You can see that Wolf is investing a considerable amount of this. I would have left that Balliard for quite some time. Make him maybe put another Phaser Turret or something like that. If he can keep cycling ships, the only thing that he'll possibly lose is micromanagement time, APM, actions per minute. Um, he won't lose anything else. But he only has this bug now and this Kaduge and this Kabej. So now he's ceded this territory. These B8s can go out and attack elsewhere. He has the bugs going out. He did buy supply once, so that's right on time. We see this Ketracel synthesizer going up now. Nice prime raiding target if we had some scouting going on over there. We have the scout coming up over here. In its, in its current out. situation, what would you say he would be best off doing here um, in terms of carrying those B8s and those bugs? Well, he needs more Kaduge for sure. Uh, he needs something to tank for that, and he does need something out of the battle yard that's heavier. So he would like to get up to something that's more like a battleship, like a Vorcha, something of that sort. Vorcha does take a little bit more damage from the B8s because it's, uh, it's anti-short range, not anti-long, but it does take a lot more punishment. And right now those, ba um, those little um, Burrells aren't going to take much, and those Kabets are certainly not going to take very much. You can see this bug, they're heading straight down here. He's just guessing that there's a yard over here. He didn't actually even very, scout. Very nice. Define is building the battle yard. At that Dilithium moon, you said you wish you'd see him take. And yes. he is. And we don't and see that Define is going over there to protect it, even though he has a scout over here and he knows exactly where these ships are heading. Ah, this is interesting. So he didn't actually head over there. He looked like he was going to, but he looks like he's going to take this facility first. So we've got four Klingon ships versus five, six Dominion ships. B8s are going to be done soon. We're going to move into um, probably into bombers, I assume, since that seems to be a typical Dominion thing to do against Klingon players. So what we're going to see here actually is a dual attack, I reckon. He's going to bug that expansion. Oh, no. I thought he was going to see a dual attack. That would be quite nice. Yes, that would have been a smart decision smart to do. Decision. Take all those Klingon ships. I think Defiant actually thinks it's going to be a dual attack because he keeps moving back around in circles. But it's not, it's not actually not going to be a draw attack. But again, that would have been very clever. He would have full sticking on. He only have a very limited fleet right now to make a choice about where they should go or where they shouldn't go, which would have left those bugs to pound at those miners. Again, the bugs aren't very strong. I reckon if you popped every single miner here, they'd deal with those bugs quite happily. Uh, the bugs do, however, have ADAI, which means they take much less from these medium range units like that Kabej, like that um, uh, Kaduj over there, and like these Katingas. So this is very dangerous. These things do not need to be sitting around here. They need to be making a decision what they want to do. If Defiant wants to harass, he needs to go harass. Sitting there just uh, lags us. It doesn't actually help him at all. You can see he's decommissioning that. He's truly given up on this location. Did yes, you say lags go. us? I am not lagging this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. So Defiant is finally moving out. I think he's going to probably harass over here. He has a scout over here. And where the scout is, that's generally a good indication of where a player's attention is. We can see these Katingas are now ready. They could go out and harass now. We have another Kadu or, uh, Kabej over here. We don't have any more Kaduj. He does have the resources. 2,000 Tritanium. He could at least go for a field research and get some research out of there. We can see yeah, he's, more gonna, he's moving back down now to defend his uh, expansions. It's obviously where... Uh, Wolf is going to go. And that's the thing. He's obviously got a scout following them, so he knows this. Um, I don't know if he has a strong enough fleet, um, even with yard cycling, to fend this off. But I guess we'll see. Um, yes, he's happens. quite let those B8s build up. That's five B8s, and that is another um, B8 coming down and bugs. This is a very hard fleet to defend against. We can see that now there are no more B8s going to be in production. Um, so whatever he's got, he's got. So we'll have to hope that Defiant can make the best use out of his ships. We see these Katingas coming in and that one uh, Kabej. He hasn't queued up any more ships out of these things, only Kabej, which are still weak against these pulses. The Sang is coming out. He's going to take out these bugs pretty quickly. He hasn't triggered yet his abilities for his Kaduj. So we really need to see that. We need to see him fighting on the top of the yard rather than on the bottom since these Klingon ships are going to come in through the top of this facility. Two Katingas have already bit, and bit it. Another one's gonna bite it. Yeah, I know. I know. Bite bites it. That's it. So much. But if it is me, I would always set the rally point to be above the yard. It's just, it's like it's just to save them to constantly micro them up. Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. 
And now, although he's ta attacking the bugs, I wouldn't choose those targets really. I would like to choose these um, these uh, B8s because they have the pulses, they have the most damage here. And once he's out of B8s, he ain't got no more. And the bugs are replicable, they're easily to be produced, they're cheap. And so these B8s are the ones that are really uh, valuable. Um, and you can switch to smaller size Klingon ships if you get rid of those. And we're going to see this nicely ranked up B8 taken out pretty shortly. But at the same time, um, Wolf isn't paying attention and is trying to kill this Kabej in the yard and he's not going to be able to get it. We can see that B8 just is going to explode. So there's a Klingon constructor here harassing a little bit. I think he thought he would try to expand down here. Um, but I don't understand really what's going on. He, maybe he's going to try to build a yard? What do you think is going to go on? Um, I suspect he's probably going to try and build a yard, to be honest. And we'll see. Um, but then again, he does need to get a different range. Yeah, I think he's going to go for a yard. So I still want to see this try made use of. It's 2,000 now. He should either switch miners from his try and mine something else, even if it's long distance mining, or just um, build some research heavy units like uh, Paduge, they take a lot of try. Ooh, that B8 may bite it. Let's see. Oh, he decides to cloak out. He could probably have gotten that without any damage because he has that ability, but now he's lost his engine. He's to float into oh that dear, repair facility. Oh and he's probably going to lose that miner. No, it made it in. Look at that. It just got drifted through space. Yep, and exactly. Made it in. Isn't that just beautiful to see? <laughs> you see another phase of sentry going, going up over here. Just to harass at the moment. He's doing absolutely nothing up there. He's just harassing it, being a pain in the butt. Um, it'd be really funny if he just saved these resources and built a turret right there. That'd be a real pain in the ass. It would be, except he has only that one constructor down. and he has to build the field research and set to get a turret. So he's not going to be able to manage that. No, so I guess he's using it as a minor harassment really at the moment. Now these things are building up and once they do build up to this mass, he can take these out. And so you see that the, um, the B8s have retreated now. This is a perfect time to start kiting, to start killing these things. Because when a Dominion player retreats all their ships at once, it's prime opportunity to kill something. We can notice that Wolf has far outnumbered um, Defiant, yet he's not pressing that advantage. He's going and giving him some slack. Yeah, with the with the Sangs, are they faster than the B8s, or are they just? They are slower. slower. They are... The B8s, I believe, are 120 speed, um, or no, sorry, I think 100 speed, um, or 110, and the Sangs are 90. Oh, oh very interesting. So it's really hard for him to chase those B8s, but the good thing is he can't build any more B8s. Oh, he now he built a new prototype. I take that back completely. So there we go. He's going to focus on some more B8s. Um, he wants to replenish those fleets. He obviously thinks they're very useful. Um, Klingon does actually have a small fleet now. At least a raiding fleet, definitely. Free Kabej. Um, Sesus. I can't pronounce that properly, so Dom's going to turn me off. For well, you have a saying. You, you have your Kaduj right here, and you have your Kabej. That's it. It's not very much, and uh, as you can see, this constructor is probably going to get hammered pretty soon. We have phaser sentries coming up over here. Uh, Wolf is making his whole base just very impenetrable here. We have, even have a tech lab coming up here, so I bet we're going to get some research pretty soon, or even a large yard. We see that he's banking dilithium, and that's definite signs for either lacking that uh, supply or going for that large yard. Um, I'll say the easiest place for him to attack here, um, I love doing this, but is that Tritanium at the top. Again, Wolf has gone for exactly the same thing, two supply and a phaser turret. He could take that out and at least supply starving for a little while. Because, um, you know, it's the most vulnerable target on the map at the moment. That nice Tritanium Moon right there at the top. Then you could even move on to Tritanium Moon next to it, because again, it's got nothing defending it. It's lonesome, it's by itself. Um, he could do a lot of damage there as well, um, because... It's going to be really hard for him to defend his own mining, obviously, because his fleet is so small. So at this point, his main advantage would be just to raid like absolute crazy. So we see that Define has built a second constructor, but given that he's not using the first one, I'm not sure what the purpose here was. I'm hoping that he will build something very soon, some more mining. He's got plenty of try. He needs that dilithium, so he needs to really take a risk here and rebuild over here. 
rebuild um, the miners. He's rebuilding. Some miners so coming he's, out. he's heading over there. He's going to try and get his miner back up. Um, so that's what he's planning doing. Again, though, he's doing no raiding whatsoever. He's so focused on his fleet that he can't do any damage to, really. That he's following it around, and he's never going to decloak and attack it. So he's better off just raiding the most vulnerable spots he can, which are the two Tritaniums at the top. And you'll see that this battle yard is probably going to be taken out shortly. This Dominion fleet is quite massive. He's going to try to kite, draw him out, but uh, this won't work for too long. You can see that the uh, Sang have even gone into medium range, and we're going to do some transporting, I hope. Maybe not. He hasn't let yet this, this, this guy. Right. There he goes. He's about survived. <laughs> so Klingons have absolutely no resources to build their uh, mining station. They need just a bit more. Um, so he needs to probably stop production on a ship over here if he wants to get up that mining. Oh, he has nothing in production. Maybe some miners? Yes, a miner in production over here. But this is going to be too little too late. He's, everything that the Klingon have is out of position. He needs to be up at top of this yard. Whenever you're outnumbered, you really need to be close to those yard entrances. And he's moving there now. He realizes this, but he's already lost two ships. He's going to lose a third one. Um, these, these ships are just not going to be able to make in the yard. There's too much pulse damage. He waited a little too long. He didn't harass. Yeah, like I said. There were some really easy vulnerable targets on this platform to go for. I mean, it took those titanium moons until the end of this Earth, I reckon, at this rate. Um, but yeah, they are always in target to walk in these games, from what I've seen. Um, he never defends his titanium moon above his base, and he always puts one phase turret at those two supply stations. Two very easy targets. It would have been enough to at least turn down for a little bit while you try to get your forces back up and kept them busy. Um, because, as I said, his fleet was never big enough to have this fleet, so there's no point facing it head on, even if it is by your yard. You can see that bug making out by the skin of its teeth. So another thing you want to do when you're going cycling into yards is not just tell them to repair when they're next to the yard, but actually manually order them to go straight into the yard and then hit repair because that way these things do not circle around like crazy like they are. Um, you instead control their exact direction. You can see that now Klingons has only no ships. Um, he has a Kabej coming out now, but this isn't going to be enough. Um, 55 dilithium, almost 2,000, almost 3,000 tritanium. We and have nothing. Yeah, there, nothing was the, there was the gobbled gaming, and just what he left, he did blame the dumb yard bug. Now, damn yard bug. I don't think there was a yard bug. Uh, all right. Well, it was well. caused by the replace weapon, so whenever the Kaduj does trigger its replace weapon, that Q will get longer, but the circling around, twitching around, that's all because you tell the ship to go in at the wrong angle. We can see that he did actually put up that large yard at the end. And uh, we're going to sign off tonight. Are we going to have a player interview, Brad and Mark? We can ask them. Are you in the mood to actually ask questions this time? <laughs> no, but I'm sure that you'll talk for the both of us, Mr. Gossip. All right, signing off for the moment. This is Dominus Noctis and Redman Mark.